to show you how to um, use my cake templates and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open my uh, four tier round template here and this is included in the template set obviously and there's the you know two three and four tier and you can move them all around and stuff but just for the sake of showing you guys I'm just going to do a quick layout and example of, of, of what I would do to create a sketch for a bride or for a client and I'm going to try my hardest to explain what I'm doing but this is just kind of showing you how I use the template it's not a Photoshop tutorial like if you want to learn to use Photoshop I would suggest going to like lynda.com and learning Photoshop but I don't have like a million hours to show you how to do that but if you know how to use Photoshop hopefully this should all make sense to you you can also use Illustrator to do your templates if you know how to use Illustrator, the files are included in there, so um, you can use those. And if you don't know how to use either Photoshop or Illustrator, you can still print out the PDFs of these pre-made templates that look just like this, basically. There's the two-tier, three-tier, four-tier, in round and square, and you can just print them out and draw directly on them. But this is a video to show you kind of how I do them in Photoshop. So, I wanted to, let's say, make this a double barrel. I'm going to press Option, Shift, and then it's not going to do what I tell it to do because I'm talking. Shh, do what I say. Why are you being like this? Okay. It was you were watching, so it was freaked out. Wouldn't do what I told it to. So, anyways, I. Uh, made this into a double barrel so you can make the tiers, you can copy and paste the tiers so that they're taller or shorter. And then once you get the configuration that you like, you can um, select all the layers and you can merge them and then create a new layer below and command click the cake layer to select all of that. Make sure you are on the underneath layer. And then we can let's say you like a nice blue. Mm. I don't know. Teal. And go to fill. Yes, please. And you're like, where's my color? It is behind the cake. So we need to change the transparency to multiply and boom, we have blue cake. Now this, you can't really see the shadows very much in this. So I am going to go to image adjustments levels and turn up my contrast so that I can see my shadows a little bit more. There's that. And all right, so we've got our base color done and that looks awesome. And your bride will be very appreciative when they say, I want my cake to be blue, but not sky blue and not, you know, water blue, like Tiffany blue. And then you can exactly make it the exact color that they want. So next thing, decorations on the cake. There are several things that you might want to add. I like to use a tablet. I use a mono price tablet, costs about 50 bucks. It's a heck of a lot easier to use instead of a mouse. So I can go to my brush and I can choose a color, white. And brush presets. I have a couple brush presets that are inks and pencils, but you can just use any, um, you know, brush. You don't have to use special presets. If you message me, I might give them to you. Okay, so some textures and things that might be on a cake. Let's say the bottom tier, they want to be quilted. I might take my, my lines here and carefully and then maybe on this tier, they're like, oh, we want some beautiful scroll work. Okay, here's some scroll work. You could also, um, if you're like a Photoshop wizard, you could use 
patterns that you find online, like a damask pattern. Let's say, go to damask pattern is Ooh, look at this one. This matches our cake. View image. Save image. Just gonna put this in cake templates. Sure, we'll save it there. Go back to Photoshop. Open. Oh, right there. Merge layers. Come over here. Oh, look all right. Put this in over the top and command click and command shift I for inverse and command X to get rid of it. And now look at that. I've got a tier. Merge these. Wait, wait, wait. First, multiply. I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit. No, I'm not. I need to turn up the contrast so you can see a little bit of the detail in the cake behind there. See? Shadow. Shadow. Okay. Now I will merge those. You can see what I mean by giving your cake a pattern or something. If you didn't want to like draw it all in, then it was pretty easy. You're basically just masking out an area and putting the pattern over it. But I already merged these, so I can't do that now. So that's poor planning on my part. Anyways, back to the drawing. So another texture. Let's say they want ruffles. Draw on some squiggly lines to represent ruffles. If I wanted to make these ruff show that these ruffles are going to be white, obviously, I would take my brush, make it a little bit fatter, and I would actually be on this right layer. That would be good. I would actually just paint, turn the opacity down a little bit. I would like paint over these with a little bit of white. Sorry, my computer keeps beeping at me. Facebook updates, never ending Facebook updates. You can do the same thing to these like little tufts here. Do a little shading to them to show that there's some dimension to these tufts. It's like you don't have to get super detailed with it, but all these little details and everything just help the client understand what's going on on the cake. And they get super excited when they see the sketch and like, oh my god, the colors are perfect and the design is amazing. It's beyond what I expected. We're just going to pay you everything right now. Is that okay? Do you take cash? And then you do a little dance, and then you say, yes it is. Yes it is okay. I do accept cash. Unless you don't accept cash, then you're crazy. Alright, so, you know, you kind of get the idea there. Adding elements. I go to the Google once again, and I might say, well, let's see, what goes with teal? White? Peony. I want some flowers. I want some flowers. 
All right, what we're looking for is a flower on a white background so that it is easy to cut out. I'm going to save this in my flowers directory. And double click. <coughs> Excuse me. First thing I'm going to do is cut out this little stem here. And I'm going to use the magic wand to select too much tolerance. Okay, so select the rest of the background, cut that out, and the next thing I'm going to do is pump up colors and the contrast and then I use this fancy tool it's actually a filter called clean topaz clean and this helps me take an image that is like a, a photograph like this flower and make it look more like it was drawn so that saves me some time and then the client thinks that I drew this flower and they're like wow you're so amazing and I'm like I know I spent so much time on this sketch for you so I will just kind of go through these like different filters until I see one that I sort of like. Like I like this one. Turn up the strength a little bit, tweak it. I want my edges to be a little bit stronger. Sharpen I say. There we go. Okay, I like that. You can buy this filter and topazlabs.com forward slash clean. It is $29.99, not too shabby. I use mine all the time. They have a bunch of other filters and stuff too that are like for cutting stuff out and masking and all right. Flower all done. And it doesn't have a background, so we can easily transform our flowers. And this that's done. I'm also going to put in maybe, actually, I'm going to put this one up here. Put one here. And then you can copy them and rotate. Oops, not that. Rotate. So that you easily double up on your flowers there. And then the last thing I'll do, because this kind of looks, you look, look at the big difference between these flowers and the cake, is I will do what I call the sketch phase, where I pick a slightly darker color um, than the actual cake, and I go to my brush, and I go to pencil, and I will sketch over everything to make it look, um, let me turn up my opacity, to make everything look a little bit more artistic. I will just go over all the lines, all the edges, and it gives it more of an appearance that it was all hand drawn. The great thing about the tablet is that it is pressure sensitive. So depending on how hard you're pressing is how dark your lines are. So if you press really hard, you get a nice dark line. And if you um, don't press very hard, you get a light line. What a concept. And then I usually kind of like put in some lines to show like shadows. Oh my gosh, my computer's going so slow. It's like you're trying to ask me to record stuff and do Photoshop. So then I, the last thing I do, we'll label the tiers. <laughs> That's not a 10 inch, oh gosh. This has gotta be at least a 14. This is a 12, this is a 10, and this is an eight. Let's just say, 
And then I'll label things like sugar, pee, peony, spell right. I don't think that's spelled right. Peony. Uh oh. Peony. Oh gosh, now the word doesn't look real. I don't know. Sugar plows. Okay. Piping. And tufting. Just to give the client an idea of what they can expect their cake to look like. All right, this tutorial is getting way too long, so I'm going to stop. Basically, you get the idea of how to do this stuff. If you have a, a question about the template, just ask me. If you have a question about Photoshop, don't ask me. You can look that stuff up online in other tutorials. But tutorial questions, a-okay. I will answer those. And um, you can check out my other um, uh, sketches and stuff in the link in the description. I will put a link in there to my Facebook page that has pictures of all of my other sketches and things so you can see what is possible. Thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you next time.